Auntie Kate Bornstein, you are the very foundation for which I have built my identity around as a trans person in 2020. It was in the late 1990s that I came across your book, Gender Outlaw, at a Barnes and Noble. I think I, you know, put it in my waistband and walked out the store <laughs> with it and read <laughs> the word transgender for the first time. And it broke up my world because I realized the way that you describe gender was so inclusive and so expansive. And it wasn't this kind of traditional story that I had heard on talk shows, which was, I'm a, you know, a woman and a man's body and I'm trapped. And it was so kind of um, narrow and closing in on itself. And it was not the kind of like queer punk celebratory space of, of you and your world. And of course, books and movies were really my only conduit to um, culture. So, um, you know, we met shortly after that and we both come from um, Jewish tradition, East Coast Jewish traditions. Um, you've come a very long way since you've been an observant Jew all the way through uh, Scientology <laughs> and, and S&M and talk show circuits and performing, um, speaking, writing. You've written six books, seven books, more, Something somewhere like that. that. Yeah. But, um, and I wanted to get your take on, so this is for Shavuot, which um, nobody's ever heard of somehow. Um, <laughs> have you? <laughs> it's yes, all- but I couldn't tell you what it is. Okay, so it's the all night holiday where Jews come together and eat blintzes. And the Torah has been, you know, recognizing the, the Torah being handed down. And I was thinking about the Ten Commandments and specifically. Um, and what I would add, what would you add if there was a commandment, <laughs> if you were just going to add that amendment to and make it the 11 commandments, because 11 is a terrific number. <laughs> 11 is a master number yes yes it is um for for some time now i've i've thought that there's really only one rule mm-hmm. that people need to follow and and if there's going to be a commandment mm-hmm. uh this my commandment would be don't be mean mm-hmm. Uh, I would expand that perhaps in the in the in the language of the commandments thou shalt not uh, thou shalt not be mean to others or to yourself and then you can take away all sorts of meanings for mean um, but it comes down too greedy. Uh, One of the original definitions of mean is greedy. I'm doing this for me. Um, Basically, it says to think of others, uh, place others, not necessarily, yeah, well, as, as, as a higher importance. I thought about saying be kind and that one's going around a lot today especially with the virus and everything um but be kind i can be kind to you by making sure you uh quit this trans stuff so that you don't go to hell i'm being very kind to you by making you not be trans but that's being mean to you and that's the fact of it. Mm. So don't be mean is a lot. That that's what it comes down to. Simple. Don't be mean. Yeah. And you know, I I think that sometimes having so I've lived my life with your advice of don't be mean. And I've literally 
just sing the gospel every chance I get, you know, because I think <clears throat> that it's easy to catch yourself. And even in your private life, sometimes to say something mean about another person or, you know, and to expunge those thoughts, those feelings, those words from your life and to actually, um, and then truthfully, it's like everything that falls outside of that, it, it, it seems so simple in a way, like don't be mean, but it's so, you know, it's, it, you'd think like, oh, it's setting a low bar or something, but it's not. It's like people are mean every day.